Yeah. Because yeah. someone said the idea that would be us recorded. Yeah. Who's doing the recording? <laughs> Fender's recording? Cool. Um... Okay, so I don't know how you guys want to do this. Um, anyone, any idea? <coughs> like how? I definitely like when I had done this before. I always think it's better to uh, to have one guy on and then everybody else go spectator because you can't like talk and like okay, I think we should. Yeah, you know, people aren't gonna see what the other person sees, so it's always better to have one guy spectate. Yeah, it's just a question if I should. Uh, Fly around first and just talk a bit. Yeah. Or uh, should we run with that? Fine. Yeah. 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 Get, get started and then. Uh, yeah, I mean everybody can talk. It's just that we we need one eye. It's if everybody has their own character model, it's just gonna be weird. So it's better if just one guy. Everybody <laughs> looks at the same screen. So. <coughs> <laughs> Is there okay, any like hotkey to mute Discord? For us. I think. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can set up uh, hotkeys for sure. Just go to settings somewhere. Yeah, I'll do okay. that later. Yep. Okay. Uh, so district, as I said before, is uh, the reason we started on this is because it's the most simple map when it comes to team play. I would say it's got five very distinct lanes. You obviously all know them. That's the thing. If you go to market and heights, like heights is such an open map, it doesn't even have lanes. And market kind of has six, seven lanes. I think it's heights has been taken out of competitive rotation now. Yeah, exactly. So it's not even in rotation <coughs> and. Uh, Stuff like Ministry is also kind of comp more complicated. District is such a simple map, such a popular map, so we'll start with this one. Everybody's cool with that, right? It's a good yeah. map, good competitive, yeah. balanced and everything. Cool, we're on security side now. So generally, like just a general... Obviously now I might... As I said, I've talked a lot with Wooly, those guys. I'm good friends with Wooly for this forever. And I've still kept updated, so... From what I realized, not that much have changed in the meta. There are a few things, of course, since the map has been changed a tiny bit, but... I still, the thing that... I knew for about four or five months it's still going to be quite relevant. Re uh, relevant. So, generally, with district is that insurgent side has the opportunity to be a lot more aggressive. Is generally what people say, and security side has to play a bit more passive everywhere except not have to play more passive, but it's they got more opportunities to go do really good pre-fires and pre nades and stuff like that while the insurgents have the opportunity to kind of rush their own lane they have lane advantage in many of them so as, as except on bravo which is why i prefer security uh, and i know wooly does as well for armada and the reason is because uh, security gets on bravo one second faster so if you want to play a bravo centric game then security side is for you if you want to play a flanking kind of game where you push the side lanes like workshop and garage and kind of get around them then probably certain this might be a better solution because if you think about it if you're security pushing for here is not that great and it's suicide currently. yeah and pushing for here is pretty okay i mean i did it all the time but it's a lot more common now from what i've seen and heard that like this used to be a very like tactic that mainly only I used, but it became a lot more popular. So people are more aware that you can jump past this and push it. Uh, so it's a lot safer for an insurgency guy, for example, to get into this. And he's already watching a lot of stuff on Bravo, while this guy is not. He can't watch Bravo at all. He's only watching his own lane, while this guy is watching his lane and he's watching Bravo. And he can easily get out here for a road. So generally, insurgency side has a bit stronger flanks, and Bravo has a stronger B point. Um, and I always prefer to play the B point heavily. Like, if you watch streams of DDL and stuff, a lot of the times the team that is losing is the team that is losing the B pressure very, very often. It was a very, very uh, obvious match for just two months ago or something where Armada played as FTC, which was the final, I think, in DDL. And they played on District, and Armada won pretty easily because uh, FTC didn't have a B player, basically. Sometimes it sent one guy on, but then maybe Armada had two guys on. and one guy in the window looking down and one guy flanking from the side. So, like they put all their pressure on the B point while FTC were putting a lot of emphasis on double rushing apps and double rushing Balkan, focusing down on silence. And it didn't matter in the end because Armadia has got the B cap and got everyone back in. So I definitely think trying to play B is the strong move on this map and a lot of the maps. Um, it's also, as I said, with security being more passive kind of, uh, and it starts having the rushing. It's also a right-sided map generally considered by many so you're stronger left side sorry you're stronger on your left side of the map so when we are security your right side left side is generally going to be your strong side that means balcony and cafe 
those are your strong lanes because of B pressure. That's why. So if you're not playing a B pressure map, that might not be the case. But generally, they are considered stronger because this guy can obviously look down from dark window onto B, while this guy cannot do that unless he gets out all the way onto this side. But that's not a safe move. So the safe move is to go into there, or even here is kind of safe as well. He can like he can get peaks down here as well. So interesting point though on insurgent side balcony you can actually peek across to apps without seeing from balcony oh yeah 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 you can do that uh, i guess from you can yeah sit in there and and go in you can even peek from here if you find that really i haven't got many kills with it but it is possible to get kills through seeing there the window you can see a guy in there as well so but uh you can do that but you cannot really see the b point unless you get up here first and obviously as i said these are not safe things to do so um so this side is stronger, and cafe side is also because he can just run onto here, and he already sees B and apps and everything. While this guy, same deal, he can't help out Brava at all unless he really pushes his lane and generally has to kill someone. This guy doesn't have to kill someone. And for insurgents, it's the same thing over here. As I already mentioned, this guy can help out Bravo, and apps. Everybody knows that that the apps windows is really strong, while the security apps windows is really bad. He can't see much. It's okay, definitely, but it's not the same kind of deal as having someone peek out here. So left side of the map, for sure. Um, but you can always break the rules, you know. But just general idea, left side is better for B control. But that means that, for example, if you really want to get B control, you can push the left side really hard. You can have two guys down in workshop, one guy just rushing onto here. And when you're playing security, the opposite move of doing that is having two guys in cafe, one guy playing more heavy towards that, and one guy rushing out of here. So. Have you ever seen teams play where they literally abandon that weaker side? It's like they'd put one person yeah. in C windows and then everyone else would go left side. Yeah, it's very, very common. I mean, now, um, uh, if you throw out these kind of like, when I come up with examples and stuff, I will reference team that I played on before with Meowfius and Blade, uh, Charlie Ninjas, and Jaeger and Murdoch and Leophyte, uh, where I was the team captain. Uh, so what we did, for example, was since um, we we did a lot of those where we simply this since it's the weak side we had only one guy back here basically which we called meow box so meow was sitting here and we left like this was the most right-sided player we had except the b guy i guess so we had like one guy in apps one guy cubby two guys workshop one guy here so that's full left side play and on the other side we sometimes did the same when i had been pushing this really really hard i stopped pushing it because they were so afraid and maybe even push two guys there so that's when we stopped playing it Apps is not really needed anyway, so you leave this whole side open, and we just put Leophyte up, up here instead. So Leophyte could watch this early game, see if someone's pushing, and then you can just sit and hold here. And even like, you know, if, if Meowthys dies here, he can kill this guy, he can just keep an eye on this, so... We left this whole right side open, so definitely. Um, but I wouldn't say that's a, a default setup, like if you think in Counter-Strike terms, you know, you have the defaults when you... I wouldn't call that a default setup, but after a while, when you figure the enemy team out, you can see like, hey guys, I think that they're gonna play really heavy on this side. Maybe we could let that side fully go and just put someone far back. And because if you play someone up in these, when they come out and come out into the road, they got like ten thousand places to watch. So <laughs> yeah. gen generally, if they're gonna play strong here, you can say fuck that side. Instead of being like, guys, they're putting two guys in workshop. We gotta put two guys in workshop. You can say, guys, they're putting two in workshop. We're playing zero in workshop and just let them sit there. They're probably having one guy aggressive and one guy passive. So this guy back here then is going to be 100% useless for the whole game, for the whole match, uh, round, sorry. So definitely, uh, but you can even do the opposite, which we did as well then, since I said the left side is stronger. We did right side pushes as well, where we had three guys pushing through here. We had one guy coming here, pre-fire, and then we had me and Blade running through here. And just double teaming this together. We both jumped the door and then peeked one door each at the same time, generally. And we try to push to Charlie. And the only guy who was back here was usually Meowthius, who either played up here or something inside here, or maybe back here. Because back here is pretty good. When they step on Alpha, you can peek in, and they're not gonna think that you're on Alpha already. So that's why. So you can do that as well. We pushed really hard on the right side, even though it's the weak side. So, uh, but that's just a general rule. How you're gonna see other teams play is that they're gonna play to their strong side a lot of times. It's very, I guess, better teams. You're gonna see a lot more double double stacks on balcony as security than they're gonna double stack apps. If they're double stacking apps, you can shut that down super easily. 
if they're double stacking, stacking balcony, it's a bit more difficult because it's simply stronger and safer. Have you ever seen teams abandon B? So, for example, as a security, you literally abandon B to go for C. Yeah, yeah, uh, that strat was basically what we did. We didn't have a when we ran two guys, me and Blade for here, Jaeger pre-fire. After Jaeger pre-fired, he went into here just to see that nobody flanked us. And Meowfius was sitting back there and Leo fight, I think pre fire through the arch and then ran up to balcony. So we didn't have a B player and we never had anyone risk peeking onto B. So when he was up here, there was no reason for him to peek onto it because he has no one to defend out here. There's no one on B. There's no one close to it. And Meowfius never had to go in here because that's pretty stupid to be in cafe when you can just sit out here because he doesn't have a B player to help out. So yeah, you can abandon B, but if you abandon B, you have need to have a really good plan. As I said earlier with the FTC versus Armada, they didn't. They just sat in their own lanes. And since probably their discussion in their team was like, hey, who's playing B? And they're like, fuck B, I'm not playing B. B is boring as fuck, you know, I'm not playing. <laughs> so they, get, they didn't get anyone to play B, so they just lost. But if you have a it plan to push the other side, then it's fine. It sounds like the way to win is either control B or just dominate a lane so heavily they can't regroup yeah. themselves. Yeah, and that's probably how Virtus is going to play as well because uh, we had a lot of success with that before and I don't think Meowthius and Blade has uh, foregone that fully. So, I, uh, yeah, but when you see teams like Armada and stuff, they play a bit more default style where they have most of the time they don't leave a full side open. They're going to have most of the time they're gonna stack up on all lanes, have one guy in every lane. Sometimes they leave a lane open, but they probably won't leave a whole side open or like the full Bravo side open, but I think Virtus might do that. Okay, but um, so a default setup, if we, you just wanna play the strong meta, which is there's nothing wrong with playing the meta, it's really strong for a reason, so it's um, you play to your left side basically. You can have two guys on Balk, one guy in Cafe, one guy on Bravo, and one guy playing passive back here. That's what I would say a pretty strong uh, default setup. So you basically don't have anyone workshop and you don't have anyone apps, but you do not risk it anyway because you have a guy watching that shit. So say he can sit back here, for example. He can do something first. This guy needs to know a nade or a smoke or a pre-fire because it's useless for him to run in here in the start of the round. He can run in and he's already watching these two lanes. He cannot push out here because then he will shoot. Or he can sit wherever the fuck he wants, but that's a pretty good spot. Um, so that could be a good default, and on the other side, you could have one workshop, one apps, uh, one B, one cafe. You can have one guy being aggressive in cafe if you're having a really good player, someone here who's good at flanker and likes to push and plays cafe a lot. So Rex, for example, no, Rex didn't play cafe. It was someone else. So whatever, like that guy. Sure. Otherwise, you might just do the default with this guy doing. It the same as this guy does on this side, he does kind of the same job over here. He does not pre-fire or something, or a nade over, and then he kind of just holds this. And the fifth guy can be a bit of a joker, you could either have him in cubby or double stack workshop, or you could have him in balcony, depending on what team you're playing against, or what you feel like, or whatever. So I would say on district, you definitely don't need to uh, put one guy in each lane, I think that's kind of weak a lot of times. Just literally just putting one guy, okay, we have one guy rushing cafe, one guy playing aggressive on Valk, one guy B, one guy aggressive in workshop, one guy pushing in the middle of apps. I think that's a pretty weak setup because it's, it doesn't really put any strength anywhere. You're kind of thin everywhere, so all you're relying on is just personal skill. And you never want to rely on you being more skilled than the enemy team. You want to win because you simply had a better setup. And if you're more skilled, that's just going to mean that he's going to be even better, that's when you get a 9-0 win, because you both have better strategy and a better individually played, uh, individual skilled players. You guys won't be as individually skilled as Virtus in the beginning, but that doesn't mean that you can't beat them with better tactics or better teamwork. Yeah, you're playing a lot of cafe, right? Okay, that's good. That's good. 
Um, we could do some like 1v1s or 2v2s and see how you can hold the lanes from people running different ways. Yeah, we can do that as well. Later. Are you talking about uh, security now? Yeah. What did you say out here? Trash bags. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because this is the, uh, as I said, this is strong, and uh, that kind of play will become so much stronger if you have someone with you to do similar things. So if you have someone through B as well and you're tapping it from there and he's running up here, now you got one guy watching this arch here while well, you can focus only on this and you can kind of cover this guy by seeing you know, the porch area here and stuff like that. So you got a nice crossfire setting up. So that's one kind of play you do. And uh, yeah, I think we should try in the beginning at least to revolve most of our plays around B. So we think on what we want to do on B for our round. So say that, okay, let's just do a hypothetical default setup. I would, so say we're getting onto a scrim right now and we want to play just a first round. We don't know anything about the enemy team or what they like to do or anything. So we're just going to run a standard setup. I think a standard setup actually would be cool to run two guys on B, like Fenris just kind of said. Uh, I think that would not... Because security side is so strong on B, they're faster in every single way. So I, w I would suggest... So what I would suggest is this. If we have the two guys I think Fenris' run there is actually really nice. A guy with a good spawn takes a flanker, runs out here. Here he has to be ready, he might have to stop a little bit, not run. I would definitely say you want to get your aim aim up. Because someone might be running out of there, someone might be peeking you. This is another thing that we're going to deal with that later, so... Technically you want to be ready for a guy rushing out here. So you might either you just rely on you being able to aim, or you might just take it a bit slower, aim, and then run down. You could tap it, and then get here. So that's kind of like a fake because you have no one on B, you have one guy here and then the other guy I would suggest also playing a position off B. So one of my favorite ones that not played a lot is down here. It's a really strong position. It's also similar to that one. It's very close to B. You can get on it very very fast. So either he plays here or he plays there. That's I would say the best two off positions that's not off B because there's no reason tapping Bravo if this guy's just gonna run on. Then it's better to just not tap Bravo and just run on here, and you have two guys on Bravo double capping it. So a fake one could be, yeah, he's tapping and then the other guy get into position. So what? So now that we got this B established, what they want to do, then everybody else kind of has to play around it, because there will become obstacles. So for this guy, the obvious obstacle is that when he's running out here, boom, he's dead, because the guy just peeked from there, or there. So that needs to be de dealt with, there are multiple ways, two most common people, it's obviously dark window. To, and this guy needs to learn as well, of course, the, he could either go for a wall bang, which is a bit more risky because he might miss him, or he could do a safe thing and just pre-fire the windows. Because uh, if he just does this, you know, he like pre-fire them, then the guy won't really dare to peek. And he doesn't have to do it for long because this guy literally only has to get in position. But this needs to be dealt with because this guy cannot do anything about it. And um, we can decide upon what do we do to deal with the apps thing. Do we do that or do we do... Um, a second guy running in with Fenris here behind him and kind of just peeking this. That's that's a possibility as well. Or if they have a really strong apps player, which we have done once or twice in screens when I play, when they like literally their best player played apps when he just wrecked us. We had two guys. We had one guy doing this and we had one guy in here. So we made 100% sure that the apps guy could not peek the fucking windows anytime. So, but a standard one we'll save for now. We'll have to do the standard thing of a guy getting up here and preparing the windows and not aim for him when he sees him because that's when it's too late. When he sees him, the B guy will already be dead. And the B guy, this guy, is more important than you are. Because you are not close to Bravo. And the only reason that you're playing is to help out your B guy. Because that's what the objective is set. You're not going for Charlie over here. You're not defending Alpha. You're you're up here because you're going to help your B guy. You're not up here to kill this guy. You're up here to out-support your B guy, basically. This guy can't support his B guy anymore. So if he's sitting back here, that's great for you. He's not doing shit. So... 
you're trying to support this guy, so you're more important than him. It's not about getting the kill, it's about preventing this guy from getting killed. But obviously, getting the kill is great, so... Make sure the pre fighters I would say. Maybe wall bank with an M16. Um, I don't think an M4 is even good enough, because it's at an angle, so it's not gonna do much. It's gonna do very little damage, so you're gonna need an M16. What about an uh, MK18? Uh, no, a MK18 does the same as M4, so... M16 and AC556 does the same damage, so you can use those two. Can or, you uh, or on quickly... L1, L1, of course. Yeah, go on. Uh, can you qu quickly uh, show how to avoid the uh, apps pre-fire from Dark Window when you are Insurgents? That's gonna be hard one. When you are Insurgents, when you're up here and you wanna uh, avoid No, 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 uh, when you're apps, like what you just showed. Like how to okay. avoid them uh, pre-firing Dark Window. Okay, well yeah. you, you obviously can't peek it if you just wanna run by. I'm not an apps player, but I have played a bit of cub. Obviously, so the only reason to run by it then is to get into a great position here. So first, think: think, do I have to run past the windows? If you have to, because you're, you are gonna peek this middle. If you really, really have to, uh, then the only real option is to slide as soon as you get up. I mean, there's only luck here. If you get here and he has a perfect pre-fire on you, there's not that much you can do. But the only thing that I would do is just slide as soon as you're here, like so. Okay. That that's really the only thing that you can do. And if you do that, I haven't died many times. I said, fuck. I think <laughs> those there's, bricks get. Th yeah, there's an uphill thing there. Think, ah, you gotta like kind of fight. But that's that's the best you can do. Uh, some things are just down to luck. Or as I said, you can't really know what the enemy's gonna do. This pre-fire, if you're getting shot through the wall here, the only thing you can do is not to go here, basically. And if you know they're doing this a lot and it's a problem, as I said, the only time you ever have to rush past the windows is to get to the middle. So you can just think like, hey, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe we'll play past it up here. You can take the other way around even. Just run all the way around and hold the middle from here instead. So, uh, no, I, I don't know any good way. We can talk with Freemind later. He's pretty good in apps. But I don't have any solution to that. Um, back to the other thing. So this guy is supporting. That's three guys total. One on B. One on B. Or maybe back here, we can decide upon that later. We can talk individually with the B guy. The other guys don't really need to care that much what he's doing. Uh, so what could the other possible problem be for these guys getting out here? Obviously the B guy, but they have an advantage on him because he's most likely going to be alone, right? There's not that many people rushing out two guys. So we'll assume that he's alone. He's going to get two, He's going to get shot from two angles. He's going to get shot from here. And this guy is going to be faster, so when I'm about here... This guy is going to be somewhere here, assuming similar spawns. So that means that when I'm up here, he's just going to enter the point, kind of. He's going to be around this area. So you're already set up when he's coming around here, so it should be a good kill. If you are not getting the kill, this guy is going to kill. So B guy is kind of taken care of, Apps is taken care of. Then it's obviously a guy rushing out of workshop. So was someone going to say something? No. Yeah. No, I thought I heard someone. So, simple thing is a pre-fire, right? You can jump up on here, that's one. If you get a good spawn, you can do that. If you ha not have the best spawn, and you don't have a flanker, because you shouldn't have a flanker because you're playing passive. We need to flank some Bravo on, on this kind of play. So you can also go to this gate, the handlebar here, you just run into it, turn, shoot. My aim Interesting is Interesting thing it. there, yeah, shoot through the box rather than over it. Yeah, yeah, but with an uh, M16, like I've always yeah. done with, with M16, there's no reason having a flanker here, so boom. Ah, you can actually shoot above it, because they can't slide. I like to shoot above it, they can't slide in here, that's the thing. If they slide, they're gonna stop, so... If they get there with a faster spawn though, they can lie down underneath it. And if you shoot through the box, and if they're lying oh, yeah, yeah. there, yeah, they'll still get hit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you can, you can spam a fruit, but I would say the first shots should go above because we're not trying to kill him, we're trying to prevent a rush. That's what we're trying to do, really. Aye, fair if, enough. We're, if we're playing a Charlie hit, like trying to get to Charlie, then we really want to kill this guy. But now, if he goes prone back here, that's great. That's like, we, we don't care much about that. We, wa we don't want to take a battle with him, so if he starts shooting back, then try to back off. Uh, this is mainly just to stop a rush and to call out a rush. If he gets by, you can call it out so these guys know that. But that's a bit to stop anyone trying to get out of here. And the last thing uh, that you really have to worry about is a guy coming down a cubby late. But we already have a pretty good position for that. This guy has really nice angle on to this because this guy comes out with a left peak and he won't expect it. He's gonna like peak these areas. He's not gonna peak down here. At least I don't think so. 
not if you haven't played it already really early, so you should have an advantage on him as well. Uh, the whole sorry. cafe is open though. Yeah, so but we only used four guys so far. Yeah. So the, so the fifth guy is uh, depending on then what they do. So say that they have someone in apps being really really annoying, uh, shooting out of the windows and killing our guy. Then you might want to do as I said before, do the double thing with one guy going here, and one in balcony. If they're not being a big problem up there because they're simply just avoiding your pre-fire, like Rex said, he's like, hey, I'm just trying to survive up here. You know, then this guy doesn't they really have to peek. We already have a pre-fire set up. Then he can play cafe. Uh, and yeah, all of this is trying to feel out the enemy a little bit. But if it's the first round, you definitely want to watch cafe rush because you can't just assume that they're not. But if you play it for four rounds and they haven't pushed cafe a single time, this guy can probably be a bit more proactive onto here and try to help out these guys watching the cubby, watch up here. But the first round you probably want to be safe, so you could even have someone back here. Because now he's watching a cafe push, there's nothing they can do. They can drop the hole if they want, they can rush by, it doesn't matter. They're all gonna have need to pass in this line in front of you. This, this line here, they'll all have to cross it. Whether they cross it through cafe, or if they cross it through here, they'll have to cross your line of sight at some point. And it's a pretty big gap, so hopefully you can get the shot here. It should be an easy shot. Gotta watch for balcony windows there. Yeah, but it's also not generally what people look for that much, and you have just an easy shot on him. But yeah, that's true. You want to be careful of that, especially in the beginning of the round, to be honest. In the beginning of the round, you kind of want to be more careful of this guy than this guy. Uh, short note on just technical tip that doesn't have to do with play, is when you have two levels to watch, below you and up, uh, lower and upper, always watch the lower and rely on a flick up. Because if you're watching the upper, you don't see the lower. So it's the same on here. We're done here. If if the if the last guy was seen in apps, uh, watch the apps windows, of course, for a while. If you just saw him run by, watch the apps windows. Be careful of those. And then after five seconds or so, he could have rotated down to cubby. So now you're like, hmm, is he windows? Is he cubby? Don't don't be like, I'm gonna watch the window. I think he's there. Take the safe route and watch the cubby, and then flick up to the windows. Never watch above you unless you really have to. You always want to look down as much as possible. It's the same on all of these, like similar over here as well, I guess. So, it's not that common that it happens, but it happens with the windows on here. It's the same if you're kind of down here, I think. I've had this problem a lot of times when it's like, I want to watch Cubby, but I also want to watch this. Like, what do I watch? You, you always want to watch the lower part and just flip up. Okay, but... Uh, so this guy needs to figure out a defensive position to hold Cafe. We don't want to get flanked from Cafe, we don't want him to be able to run through here. So it's not an option to sit anything back here or something. This is not an option, because this guy is open then. Uh, but it is an option to sit back here, as I said. And it's also an option to play anything else that you like that holds it defensively. You can sit here, this is a really old school position. I'm not sure it's used that much anymore. So just like fashion, you can bring back old stuff that's been used. This was super common a year ago, but I've added... Since it was so common, people stopped using it. So I would say you can probably start using this a little bit again. Just throw it in the first round, you know. I don't think they will expect it. So this is a nice one as well. Or Oh, this one, yeah. 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 Yeah, it takes a bit of time to get up on, so it's a bit a bit risky, but you can get up on all of these, I think, if they haven't patched it. Okay, they patched that one. But yeah, you can get up on this one still, I guess. Well, can you actually get up on yeah, this? Yeah, you can still get up on that one. From this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can get up here, but it's not that great because it doesn't give you anything extra. It's like, you're just getting elevated and you're getting a smaller angle, so... If you're gonna play here, I think this is better. Uh, but yeah, defensive guy out here, but he still needs to have control of this. He's not trying to push this corner. Same thing here, he's not actually that interested in killing this guy. If this guy's content with going prone here, that's fine for us. Because we have two guys on B, they most likely only have one guy. Our plan is to take B, not to kill this guy in here. So We'll flush him out later, like he has to come out at some point if we kill their B guys. So that's all five guys. That's a quick repeat, two guys B. One guy here, which main job is to Make sure this guy doesn't kill this guy, and even this guy coming out of here, he could technically peek him as well. Uh, we have one guy in his favorite way, making sure that they cannot rush this. If he has an amazing spawn, he can. He doesn't even need to pre-fire because he's fast enough, so he can technically run here and just and catch him while he runs there. Or if he doesn't kill him, he will at least see him, so he can call it out, and the B guys should be able to handle him hopefully. But yeah, that's only if he rushes, and that's a pretty... If he rushes and he has a good spawn, so... 
this is pretty nice if you have a good spawn. Otherwise, if you have a little bit worse spawn, you decide either you do the truck. The truck is a little bit slower, of course, because it's just further up, so... Uh, is it worth getting those 2B guys to run? Because you were talking about aiming down the sights before you got there, looking at apps windows. Is it worth having us run through Cafe and through Arch and then have people running B and apps on the other side so we can see the timings, so we know where to aim at what point? Uh, yeah, we could do that later. I also have actually on this map, I have a, a spreadsheet from some time ago where I have like literally the exact timings of every common route like for example like who's faster in the middle here well this this guy on uh, security side is actually about about uh, half a second faster and it's uh, this guy up here will be a bit slower than the apps guy actually so this apps guy can technically run up here and kill you as soon as you're running in there that's good to know. So I have all these timings, but yeah, it's very, very nice after we got... And we even timings do something, but doing a practical practical training, just yeah. running it, might also be better, definitely. But that's something we can do uh, just when you have fewer people. It can only be two guys doing that as well. So, But yeah, definitely, uh, Cherry. I can do it with you as well if you want to try later. How it looks for the guy. Say, we could put one on insurance, one on security, and the security guy runs out here. And just kind of gets the feel of when this guy is coming out, and how fast it looks and everything, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, it's also good because one of the things I don't know is how much my spawn affects the time to get to some of these places. I know well, all the timing is based on a good spawn, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's about one second from where it's the best spawn on most maps. In Serious has a bit of a tighter spawn, the best spawn is... Uh, the best spawn is here. Uh, the worst spawn, I don't know, oh, wait, is it? Yeah, it is. Best spawn is here, and the worst spawn is, you know, somewhere back here. So you can just think, yeah, you know, it's less than one second almost. So uh, I made all my timings based on the absolute best spawns. The best spawn was inserted there. Security has a bit of a bigger spawn gap uh, because the best spawn is up here. And the worst spawn, I would guess, is almost all the way back here. So maybe a little bit bigger gap. But if you just make every assumption from the best spawn, you're still. Uh, then you have to calculate, if you get the worst spawn, you have to always think that this guy could have the best spawn, so I need to be careful of that. So that's very important when you do, like, in workshop. If you get the best spawn, you can pretty comfortably run up here and sit here, because unless this guy had the absolute best spawn and plays a flanker, he's not going to be able to run by you. But if you have a bad spawn, then you probably have to switch it up and go to this one, because now you're going to be half a second faster. And that will make up for the half a second fast slower spawn that you had so uh no but you can try with different spawn how that makes a difference we can run 1v1s to get a feel of it uh definitely a good idea but do that when we have lesser people uh because you technically don't need like five people to run at the same time you only really need 1v1 or maybe 2v2 i mean uh, I, and I agree with you i want to try this as well see how it looks when it comes out because i don't know the exact timing of when this guy will i know he will be faster out here or will he maybe not i want to try that as well actually that's a good point what were you gonna say? Uh, can you jump? Yeah, they still didn't patch it. Uh, unless unless you're gonna play yourself, you can you can hear while you're jumping, but the enemy doesn't hear you jumping. So if oh, you, really? you yeah, I can I, I if I'm expecting you, I can't hear you jump. I can't like hear the landing as if. Really? Yeah. It, it wasn't like that before. Is that like new then? Is it a bug? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I found it out when, when Grimwar was playing at some time. I expected him and then I was saying to him, like, dude, how you do it? Like, you made no sound, the crouching, whatever? Or, no, okay. but, but what are you talking about? I can hear Maxi jumping. I mean, I hear myself. But... Yeah, I hear if, 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 yeah, if, if you walk afterwards, then yes. But the actual jump, the actual landing, you can't hear. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. weird as well. Okay. Well, that's good to know because uh, that makes jump peaks a lot stronger, which uh -huh. was my favorite thing to do. Just I always jumped around a lot of times, like just jump like this. Uh, it's a minor technical thing we can run on as well. Uh, jump peaking if you're not doing that much. Uh, you see some mainly like more veteran players or some of the better players do it quite a lot. Um, the reason is because you get info while you're moving forward. So a good example is obviously the first time I started doing it for a long time ago, which I would like to kind of say that I'm the 
first one started jump peeking a lot because I did it in workshop all the time. And the reason is, of course, when you're running here, and if you slide, you can't move forward and look at the side. Everybody knows that. I can't look at the side while I'm sliding. While I'm running, I can't look at the side either without stop running. But when I'm jumping, I'm keeping the same speed while I'm looking to them to my side. So that's the whole reason why you're jumping. I'm not jumping this because some people probably do because they see other people do it. But I'm not jumping it because to make it more difficult to hit me. That's not the reason at all. Then I would slide instead. That's safer. I'm doing it to get the info. So that's why I started doing this to see. Okay, he's behind the counter, and then I can repeat. So I like to repeat re this a lot. When you jump, you get the info, and then you can pre-fire him. So you can do it in so many situations. On B, for example, one of my favorite places to run out like this. I'm going to pre-fire, run, and jump. Because now I'll see the guy coming out of here. If he's running onto B, rushing, he'll gonna, he's going to be here about right now. And I see everything. He cannot hide from me. But if I'm just doing like this, the difference would be... I can slide now. So the difference would be if I do like this. I have no info. And I don't really lose anything by jumping, except that I'm becoming a bit taller. And it doesn't really matter in this regard. They would see me anyway, so... The difference is I can't shoot, but I can't shoot while I'm running like this either. I can't shoot while I'm sliding either, so... Sliding is safer for if you just want to survive, but if you want to get some info meanwhile, you should jump in. Like so. Multiple, like all the time. You can do it all the time. You can do it past the windows as well. I've done that as well. Like, just... If you just want to see balcony real quick, I mean... You need, obviously, maybe some somewhat low, smaller screen or... But you can also bait out shots and you can see where the muscle flashes and shit, so... It might be like, hey, I can't see shit there, okay, I'm jumping a bit too high. It's not a great example, but even just the quickest, quickest peak, you'll bait out the shot most likely, and also you might be able to see something if... When you get used to it, you can see it all the time, so... It, yeah, definitely try using that, and now you, that if you didn't already know, now you kind of know the reason why people are jump peeking, and why some people do it a lot, and why some people only do it at certain positions, so... The arch is another great example of what where I do it all the time in certain arch. Say I have done a pre-fire or something back here, or a nade. I lined up in this corner, blah, blah, blah. And first nade. I can't even remember these anymore. Oops, that's not a jump. And after that, I don't just want to peek out like this, right? Because that's pretty dangerous. But I might still want to get the info, so then I can just peek, like so. And if the guy was at weed, I can jump by the arch, and then I can re-peek him. So if he's weed, he's not going to kill me there. That's usually too fast, and then I can re-peek him. So jump peeking is a great thing to learn. Or know how to do and it's the same on balcony as well early game it doesn't matter much on balcony because nobody's gonna be here in certain is faster there's no way you can be here but if you're coming up to balcony late you can definitely just jump pick this and if he's on balcony he's not gonna kill you because unless he has inhuman reactions or cheating and then you can do whatever you want with info you can run down you can re-peek or you can nade him or whatever so that's the reason if you just want to survive you just slide by all right that's a bit of a side note though uh, so, who's playing what? If we're gonna do this strat, say now, for example, uh, who would be comfortable playing uh, Fenris? We already put him here then, as an example. We can all switch this up, of course, after we practiced and scrimmed and noticed that people, hey, I'm actually better at this spot, and you probably fit better here, but Fenris already been doing this, so I think we should just assume that he's gonna start with this. So, if Fenris gets the flank and run onto here, that's good, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, is anyone has anyone played Bravo a lot? Anyone comfortable on Bravo? I don't tend to play it much, but if I'm going to be in a flanker, then I should probably go on there. Yeah, on this map, you're going to have a flanker every time on Bravo, basically. There's no reason playing Bravo without a flanker. So. Right. Well, for okay. now, I'll go with some. Yeah, we'll say Cherry does uh, whatever he deems good because the risky thing with going here is that if they have a guy back in barbershop he can yeah, yeah exactly. pick up. Uh, so maybe on the first round it might be safer if you don't know if they're gonna have a guy it might be safe to do the other one and go up there yeah. or go prone behind here or whatever you want to do so you decide that yourself but you're the guy on this spot here okay um balcony anyone who's played a bit of balcony i played a bit of balcony i used to play with rookshow on naps but i would like to to try balcony because we're obviously gonna have an assault up here on this kind of round. Mm -hmm. You can switch up to flanker later for another round to push this, definitely. I'm not saying you can't put flanker about. But in the, on this kind of round where we're just trying to get a control of B, you don't need a flanker up here. So assault, you need an assault. You need to be able to pen this. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Max up here. Rex workshop, maybe? Yep. Cool. And uh, I heed. Wait, let me see. 
Bravo. Oh yeah, uh, Cafe of course. You played a bit of Cafe, right? Yep. If I remember right. I think I remember that still. That might have been some time ago, but still. Okay, yeah, it so was, you... yeah, I played it once. I kind of, kind of pushed it with the flanker. It was a bit of a strange setup, but yeah, no, you've given us some good tips, so I can play it a bit better. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll put you on on, uh, on Garage for now. Uh, cafe, I mean, on this side. So you're playing the defensive one here, so you're probably going to get an assault then for this kind of strat, and then you can switch up the yeah. rounds. Like, if you're doing some, I mean, this is a crazy thing, but if you, for one round, want to push out here, because you just think that, hey, they're not going to watch me, they're not going to have anyone up here. If you're playing at Virtuos, for example, you can rush this. If you're rushing out here, it's very likely that they don't have anyone watching it, because Meowth just likes to throw stuff, pre-fire, sit here for a while, and then peek out after a few, like, 30 seconds or so. So you can rush him, definitely. I've done that just to fuck with him sometimes. His pugs just come up and then I literally just like, <laughs> hello, kill him. So, um, but that's all if you know the enemy and if you're taking huge risks. Because if you peek out and he's watching you, there's nothing you can do. You can't kill him. So. Uh, but yeah, that's what. But otherwise, you're playing Assault, Assault on Balk, and Rex is taking the Assault when he's playing on this kind of round here as well. Then in other rounds, you're getting a flanker maybe to push this for once, get out here, you're aggressive, you know. But we got two flanks on Bravo. Assault, Assault, Assault. Cool. Um, everyone thinks that sounds uh, like yeah. it would work in a real like anything we could do different on kind of a default round. I know one thing really fast you could easily do different. Instead of taking the guys off Bravo and baiting it, just put just them both on stack. Bravo. Yeah. yeah, just get this guy literally on here. It might be like this spot is not good. It's so obvious. Blah blah blah. Yeah, but if you have two guys, it doesn't matter. You can play the obvious stuff. It's the same Counter Strike. People play the same spots all the time because only that many spots exist. So <laughs> it's all what you do with the spot. This spot alone is kind of weak. He's pretty lonely out here. But if he has a backup guy that's literally out here and maybe also goes up prone. So if they kill the guy on Bravo and they don't step on it, they don't know that you have a second guy on. So you're all capping it and they're like, minus Bravo. Okay, cool. They're not on Bravo anymore. And you're laying here capping it. So, Or obviously the other thing is just refragging. They're coming out of workshop, they're killing. Cherry over there, and then Fenris just turns around and shoots him through this. So, two guys on B, I would prefer that, definitely, but I think it's just... Uh, but maybe on the first round, I kind of like the idea of on the first round just to bait it to see what they do. And then on the second round, you can do the exact same strat. The only difference is that Fenris is running on, and Cherry is also running on. Right, that, that like, quick, uh, small differences in strats. So it's still the default, but it's a minor difference. And you can also make the minor difference of like... Um, uh, high heat, instead of playing uh, defensively first, high heat runs in offensively and takes the peak here, for example. Or maybe even high heat runs in here. So you have a third guy close to B and he can sit here and hold it. Because it's the same deal here. He's watching the exact same thing as he would do from here. The only difference is he's much close to the action. So if something happens on Bravo, you can just turn around and help him out. If someone dies on Bravo and it's 99% cap, he can easily run out, so that's an, also a variation you can have, but it's still the same deal, it's still the same uh, same idea behind it, that we're gonna cap Bravo and kill them on it, and then, then we deal with the other guys around it. Okay. Uh, should we switch to Insurian side, or? Because it's not gonna take as long as Insurian, because now we talk so much about it. I mean, a lot of stuff is the same for both sides, right? So it's gonna go a much, much, much faster on Insurgent side. Yeah, should, should we should run through a default for Insurgent side? Yeah. And then after I've done that, I'll step out and go into Spectre, and then someone else can say something, whatever they feel like. Because now I said what I think about this map, and just an example of a default, and then we can all fiddle around with it. I said, like, variations of it, and blah, blah, blah. And then when we've done that, like, another day, or on your free time, or whatever, you can figure out a C strat where you want to push that or some crazy thing where we double rush balcony but that's a bit for later I think we need a solid setup first right like just a basic that's easiest to start from so I would suggest a basic of playing playing uh, the right side as the weak side um, definitely uh, variations of it is if you get a good spawn you rush here because if you can get here you're you're removing their option of doing our strat, which is running through here. Oh, by the way, that's if that's a concern for you on the security strat, you need to have your best spawner, basically, between the two flankers. So Cherry and Fenris, you should actually, now that I say it, you should both be comfortable in doing both of these things. Because if Cherry gets an awesome spawn, the best one, he must be the one running through here. Because the timing is very specific. So if you get the best spawn and take a flanker, 
like 99% of the time you're gonna survive, especially if you slide through here. Because this guy is not gonna be fast enough to kill you, basically. Unless he had the best spawn and pistol rescue or, you know, whatever. It's very, very small. It's very unlikely that he's gonna kill you, so. But, uh, and this guy doesn't need to be as fast. He's not as reliant on speed. This guy is much more reliant, so. Okay, doesn't mind the detail. But on the insane side, if if our cafe guy gets a really good spawn, the best one, it's definitely a possibility to put him on, him on the flanker and let him, or maybe not even, maybe he doesn't even need a flanker. Just run onto here and get behind here or pre fire from the barrel, whatever he feels like. Just try to stop this push because that means they only got one more option to get onto Bravo basically. And that's from the arch. Conventional option. You can get out from workshop or you can run down balcony stairs, but like the normal options is from cafe or from arch and if you can get a good spawn onto here it's a very simple and easy way to stop this push uh, otherwise if it doesn't have a really good spawn uh, then i would suggest oh this is one thing with cafe or garage i used to play this a lot before i started playing workshop and i realized after a while that there's never a reason to play anything in between this line and uh, i would say uh, somewhere about here it's never a reason to play in between those lines, okay? That's a dead zone. You either play up here, aggressive, or you play back here, past it. There's nothing up there to gain. The only thing you're gaining by choosing any of these sneaky spots that you think are awesome is that you're gonna get shot in the back by a guy flanking you. Or you're less able to rotate to Charlie, like you're not gaining anything. And also the closer you are to the enemy, the easier it is for him to actually kill you. Like, if you're seeing here, this is an easy... If I'm coming out of here, I... It's much easier for me to to kill this guy if I'm lucky, if he's missing a shot or something. But killing a guy up here, or you can do all kind of variations. I like to go prone here instead. Meowki sits on the box, I like to prone here. It's just, it's almost impossible kills. And you have the added benefit of watching the arch if they push it. And you can rotate really fast back here, if this guy dies. So don't play the dead zone. It's I, I If you come up with an idea why it's better, then tell me. Uh, definitely. But I don't want to see you do it unless, eh, I don't know, some really weird reason. There's one other option, it's if you have played aggressively here, if you play aggressively here and your balcony die, guy dies instantly and he says, I'm down, he's rushing balcony, then you know he's coming up here, then it's the only option to play inside here, then you can go prone here. And watch this, because this guy will probably not check you, so he will run by you. I never got him killed in here, so, like, then you can watch this. Now you're watching both, you're watching this rush and you're watching this. And you can't be back there because you weren't... Yeah, obviously you're already pushed up, you can't run all the way back, this guy might f cut you off. So. That's the only reason to ever stay inside the garage. So. You're not actually playing garage, you're playing either Barber Street, or yeah, you're playing the barrel up here. Okay, sounds cool? Yep. 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 Good, good. Um, so this guy, mainly defensively focused, holding it down. Uh, he's never, his job is never to push this guy, okay? Never. Not a single time on this default strat. You're not getting out there. Not early, I'm talking early. Like, if two of our guys dies instantly and you need to do something, I would not push this lane either. I would fall back. That's another topic we'll talk about later. Falling back instead of pushing. It's usually much safer. But uh, no, you're not, your job is not to get out here, sit here for five seconds, and okay, nobody came, and then push. No. Like, you get out here, aggressive. And if you're sitting here, you're doing a great job already. Like, you're holding off a whole one of the two possibilities for them to get onto Bravo. Okay. Unless they've um, already gone through it. <laughs> exactly, you might you might have missed it, but he should only, that's why he should only go here if he has a good spawn, because if he has a good uh, spawn, yeah, okay, yeah. he should be able to see them. And it's the same thing here, as I said with this 99%, like, if if you have the absolute best spawn as insurance, and you know how to run, because you need to learn the runs as well. I'm gonna spectate you all and see how you run, because these are minor things, but if you can shave off half a second of your run, like how you jump the glass and etc., then... Uh, that, like if you run on this side of it or if you take the long route around like these small small things all the time uh, Will make the tiny tiny difference of also if you peek close to the barrel or if you peek far away from the barrel far away is better because it's faster and You're further away from the corner the closer the corner you are the more the more you show yourself What? Yeah, I know that. This is the right peak. I'm talking about the distance to a corner. So yeah, yeah, you got the right peak here, but the closer you are to a corner, the worse it is. You never want to be close to a corner. Uh, because, yeah. yeah, because the further... It's the same in real life. If you try it, you can try it yourself. If you pretend you have a pistol, walk up close to a corner and try to peek it. 
you're gonna show more your body and see less of the enemy. But if you're further away, you're gonna see more. And in this case, it also makes you see the corner faster. So these tiny, tiny, tiny things, and just being uh, having a good flick, not coming down here, and then, uh, like so, just having a really good aim, like snap, just learned it, then you're gonna be able to catch this guy. So if you're that little bit better than the other guy, then you're gonna be able to get this with a good spawn, and hopefully if he's not as good as you are, you will be able to slide past him there, because he missed that quarter of a second or something. On a related so, note, um, some people will call what Maxi was doing pieing the corner. Uh, when you're further away from the corner, it allows yeah. you to get a better view of what's coming in as you move yeah. around it. Very, very, very important. It, it shows you everything much slower. Like, that's one benefit. Like, if I'm close now, I'm showing a lot of stuff very, very fast. Like, tiny, tiny movement, and I see a lot of stuff very fast. If I'm far away, I can select, like, Everything goes much slower, you see, like everything, dark window and the balcony shows so much slower compared to from here, the balcony comes out so quick, you know, like everything goes so quick. It's the same always with every corner. So always try to stay far away from corners. I mean, if it makes sense, you, know, yeah, you don't want to reveal yourself too much. Okay, um, that's one guy. The B guys, that's what we should do first, to be honest. So B is the more difficult on the certain side, generally, because the arch is very difficult to run through. It can be naded. You're slower than him. When you're here, he's already on Bravo. And as I said before, if he does like me, if he runs out here, he will see you. There's no way to hide from him. You can slide onto there, but he will probably see the slide as well. So it's just not as easy. So there are options then that we don't have an arch guy on our default. We don't. Maybe the default on his certain side is not to play two guys. I I can make a suggestion that we take the flanker player that has the best spawn. Runs through here. And then runs out. Same deal as coming out of cafe. You might have to take an aim battle here, mainly with this guy. Uh, maybe even this guy. I've done this a ton. Like this is I've done it so many times. So I can talk you through every single possible thing that can happen. It's probably going to be Rex or uh, Cherry, maybe, because Rex is the workshop player and Cherry is the flanker slash maybe B player. So it's definitely a flanker, good spawn, and running out of here and. His goal is to get onto here, because he wants to get onto Bravo, and if he gets onto here, he's watching their arch, he's not visible from balcony. If you go into third person mode, spectator, can you do that everyone? Or yep. not everyone, but yeah. This spot is the best spot to cap Bravo from, bar none, like there's not a debate. This is the best spot to cap it from if you can get here, because now you can't see me from balcony. It's like... You wouldn't think so when you're here, when you're laying down, you feel really open, but it's only one spot that you can be visible from, and that's from their arch, and that's where you're watching. So it's our super overpowered spot, in my opinion, which not that many use. Uh, Malpheus will use it, and Blade, because they obviously they know about it, but not that many people cap from here. And even peop some teams don't even have callouts for it, like it's gonna be T2, S2, and then they're like, uh, he's uh, the box, you know, like, what box? <laughs> people don't have callouts for everything. What so, would you call this box? We call it corner box. Right. T2, S2, corner box, big box. Yeah, and bogey box. So, uh, so, so this is the B guy. The B guy is not getting out of arch. He's getting out here. So then is the option, whatever you guys feel like. Uh, there are, or your variants, as we said, depending on what the team do. If they have a good, a strong presence in our arch, if they're pre-firing the arch, if they're nading the arch, if we're afraid of running through the arch, basically. Then I would suggest that we only play this guy on B, but he has a quick backup of a guy coming down here. So this guy's backing up really quick. It takes some time to get into Cubby, but he's gonna be here about when this guy go prone. This guy's coming down here three, four seconds later. So now we can back him up. Preferably, don't take this peak. It's a bad peak. It's a left peak. You're close to the wall. You see, you're very close to the wall. That's bad compared to this guy. He's very far away from any kind of wall, so he doesn't have a problem. So don't take that peak. He has to run by. He's not gonna be able to kill you. You can even jump if you want. And now you're back up for him. You can sit here. You, you shouldn't peek unless you get a call out. If you're this guy, you shouldn't peek unless you get a call. If you get a call out balcony, it's a bit risky to peek because this guy shouldn't be able to be viewable from balcony. So it's all about the need to communicate well. But if if this guy calls out unblocked on B, that's when this guy steps in. Not him. Not him down here. If the guy in cubby is still alive and this guy's prone and unblocked, you're not standing up like this because then boom, you're shot from here or you're shot from there or anywhere. So it's not a 1v1, you know, people are watching you. So this guy is the one who's stepping in and tries to kill the B guy. Because there's only one possible place the B guy could be, and that's big box. He can't be 
here because this guy is here so he cannot be here we know that you don't even have to call it out you can just say uh, he's on b then this guy should know by experience that there's only one possible place the enemy could be and that's somewhere around this area he could have run up here as well but then this guy should have heard that unless his head said this shit so um so it's yeah it's similar stuff but instead of having two guys on to b because insurance has a worse b player it's uh, one guy b but but a backup for him and uh, he has a stronger spot than the security guys have security is a lot more risky while well, this guy has a super so it kind of weighs out uh, the, on security side we have two guys on b but on the insurance side we have a stronger guy because he has a super super good spot uh so now we have to play around that we need to make sure this guy's safe and uh his vulnerable spots are not balcony, they can't see him, they can't kill him, but they cannot see him. Cafe, same deal, they cannot see him behind that box. Um, it's obviously our arch, not that difficult to deal with, right? We just put our defensive player back here. Uh, and the most obvious one is, of course, from Workshop. And it's not that big of a deal either, because it's easy to just have someone back here. So there's some ways to cover this. Either someone playing inside workshop here, so you have a guy rushing through, Rex or Cherry rushing through, blah blah blah. A guy right behind him going into a defensive spot. We talk about those later. And I'll talk more individually with that guy who's gonna do the defensive part. Where it's good. I only like one spot inside. Because the thing is he he needs to watch so that the enemy cannot get up to here. If the enemy can get here, he can kill this guy. So all he has to do if the enemy wants to play around here, it doesn't matter. Actually, it's not that great if he gets into this position, but it's not the end of the world, so... But mainly he cannot get out to here, because then he wrecks our B guy, and that's what our play revolves around, so... There's one really good spot inside Workshop, is to... Safe guy, runs here, through the glass, jumps, jump peek, get the info. It's always nice to get info, why would you just run when you can get info? So don't run in, just jump in, and you can see the guy. And then he goes sits here. So this counter is the typical, like, this is how I counted myself. I realized when people started doing the jump a lot was, okay, so how do I counter the jump? Well, there's two ways to be sitting in the arch, which is one thing we could do. Have the guy in the arch, covering here. It's risky because you will get naded, but it's good because you can help out the B guy as well. You're an extra insurance for B. So that's the positives, is that you're closer to B, more available to help. The negatives is that you might miss the shot, it's not that easy to hit this, so if you're not that comfortable, this is not good, because we don't have a C player, we, this is the sole guy defending Charlie, so if this guy jumps by and you didn't kill him, then Charlie is gone. So uh, so that's a negative, and nades can land in here, that's a negative. Uh, this spot in here has the positive effect of uh, being extremely safe, because nobody will really check that, and if they go slow, which they probably won't, they could get killed by you sitting in here, which you aren't, but they don't know that, so they would they would not go slower, and if they are, they're not watching this corner. And if they do the classic thing, which is jumping by, they will be in mid-air, boom, dead, because you see him. So, it's a really good spot. And the third, the, the good thing with this one, is that you can also check on the B whenever you feel like it. Especially if you do the jump peek early, so if you get out like this, jump peek, and you saw him pre-fire from the truck, you know that you have a little bit of time before he can push you, because he was back here, you know, ah, he's not gonna just jump down and run instantly towards you. So you probably have a few seconds to work with where you can ignore this guy. As long as you stay behind his wall, you don't have to worry about him. Don't take a battle with him. So if you saw him there when you jumped, you can sit here. You don't have to get into a corner. You can sit here, help out. You get here, if you have the absolute best spawn, and go here. You can catch them in this window. You cannot catch them here. Uh, I mean, yeah, if they're running towards you, you can. To weed, you can catch him. But not if they run out to be. But if you get here, you can catch him in this window. And it's possible. I've done it so many times. It takes some reaction time. But boom, kill him. So they literally cannot run on to be if you get into that position. So it's extremely strong. Also, Workshop is one of the only places I'll ever use a Molotov. And yeah, it's, it's so choked. You can lay it out there. It stops them being able to see as well if you can get it through that door. Definitely. That can that, that can be done as well. Yeah, for sure. If, if you prefer that, you can... You could throw a Molotov from here and land it on the floor, or whatever. Uh, but after that, I would still sit here though, you know, because... Yeah. Why not? I mean, you, yeah. you, should, you shouldn't just leave it, you know what I mean? Like the Molotov, he could still run through it, so you need to be Definitely, aware of it. Yeah. But if you want, you, you can bring... You should be able to hear him run through it. Yeah, exactly. So, if you're doing this, yeah, sure, you can bring a Molotov with you if you want, jump peek, get in position here, and then when you feel like you rough throw some good Molotov you practice, I don't know, maybe through here, or maybe get a tight angle like this and learn how to throw it straight through. 
you know, it shouldn't be too difficult. Ah, I thought I had a Molotov. Just line up the B point and we'll see if we can fit it in. Ah, like so. So you can learn something like that. Um, okay, so this guy defends the B player's back. That's his job. And obviously a C push if they're trying to push it. Um, the third thing that you can do is also watch from here. It's the same as watching from the arch, it's just much easier. They jump by, you kill them mid-air. If they peek you, they risk... Oh fuck. I'll, just, <laughs> I'll turn on god mode anyway. And if they peek this... I mean, if they peek you, like in here, then yeah, they would get killed from there. So they're not gonna do that. So it's generally pretty good to sit there as well. So this guy playing Cubby, he could kind of double up if, if we really want to. If we really want to put resources somewhere else, this guy could be the guy watching our back, actually. And we don't need a workshop player extra. And then whenever he needs to, he can peek around, but he needs to be very aware of it that he has to peek back real quick. So he hears a call out on B. B. Kill needs to be careful because now is the time that the enemy is going to push you, probably. They heard you shoot, they're going to be like, oh shit, I got to push you. So you could do that as well. That's not me changing. That's automatic. Yeah, but it's at least in the beginning, because that playing cubby like that alone, like playing cubby and being focused both on Bravo and on Workshop, that sounds kind of difficult, right? It's it's a lot to do at the same time, and it's a lot yeah. a lot of pressure on one guy to cover, to both be a Bravo player, kind of, to help out the Bravo guy, and to watch Workshops. We'll have a guy in Workshop that sits in that corner or whatever else position he likes. And so it's, we're pretty much done very soon. Just the last guy. Is everyone in? No, Max is in. Max, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm always slow. <laughs> Okay, so we got one guy left. I can start talking anyway, you realize. Well, okay, so it's the last guy. You don't have to play apps, definitely not. Like, this guy could be flexible. But uh, So if you you can do variations, if you have a better idea of where to put him. If you want to play even more aggressive on Bravo, you can have him run through the arch instead and take that risk. Otherwise, probably the most standard thing is put a guy up in apps to help the Bravo player a bit. I do, I'm not a good apps player. This is my worst lane list map, so I should not be... Uh, showing really anything in here because I don't technically know better than you guys uh, but I can at least like I, I know I can uh, say where we should have a player so your main focus should not be to kill the apps guy you need to su survive the apps guy since this is your this is the left side of the map as I said insurance are stronger in apps that means that insurance doesn't have to kill apps because they already have the strong side security is the one who needs to take away security insurgent strength so this guy has no power sitting passive. He has no. He can't help his teammates. This guy can help his teammates sitting passive or passive, but not pushing the other lane. So, so the security guy has to push. The insurance guy has to defend. That's kind of how we want to do it. Unless you want to really kill this guy, we have no need to. So, insurance guy play passive and try to get as many peeks as you can out the window. I would say don't peek the window unless you get a call out. Exactly the same as the work uh, the cubby guy. So. Uh, and also, left, you probably know the left window is much better than the right window. If you peek the right window, many more people can see you. Because this guy has a very big advantage on you, he can see you. But he cannot see this guy. Very barely, but... I didn't know that. He, I mean, it's almost... I, I sniped a guy there once, but that was only for fun in the pugs. You can shoot through this door frame though, window frame, if you didn't know. You might think that if I shoot right now, I'm gonna shoot the window, but I won't doesn't count the window. So these black bars are the edge of the window. So you can shoot through this. I can wall bang T2 from here. Stuff like that. So that's why you can shoot the left and the right window, but you can only see the left window. So you can sit here and shoot the right window if you want. Oh. Okay. But you can't see it, so you can still get shot, but you can't be seen, so it's a lot safer. And if you sit back here, you cannot get shot either. You see, he can't shoot you. So you can sit back here, you can peek out like this. Boom, boom, boom. But obviously you're open from here, so it's all a balance, and I can't help you much with that because I don't play myself. But technically, getting back here is pretty strong start. Like if you can survive the window, as you said, Rex. Like if you can, ah, uh, can slide. If you can survive that, getting back here, playing far back is a generally good idea because then he can't see you. Or you have to play far up 
because then he can't see either. So you got a few seconds here to take advantage of a huge advantage that your team has, and that's the F window. While this guy, if he's playing passive, he's just giving you more time to peek out the window. And if he's playing aggressive, that's what he should do technically, because then he's giving you less time to peek out the window. So hopefully he's giving you a lot of time. And you can listen for him, you can take a quick peek if you feel like. I don't know, maybe you can do a nade or something. But running into the middle like this, in a strat like this, is not the best thing, I would say. Because, eh, if this guy kills you and runs out here, and goes out here, nothing happens, right? Nothing happens. You can't see the guy, so it doesn't matter. This guy can kill you and come out here, and it's not the end of the world for us. Because he'll have to go all the way down the stairs and fuck shit up. So, we can just cover the exits, you know? We can cover the cafe guy, just takes uh, the guy sitting back here, he just falls back. And holds this in some way. He gets hit all the way back here. Now he's watching both there, and he's kind of watching here as well. So it doesn't matter that much. Cubby is already occupied by us, so the Cubby guy obviously has to be a bit more focused up here. That if our guy up in Aps dies, he can still work this for a while, and then he can start turning back and maybe just watch. I don't know. But you get the idea that this guy pushing the middle on this strat is not what he wants to do, because then he's giving up his advantage of the window. Sure, this is good as well, but uh, it's a lot more risky. So, if staying in on the, your side of the apps is what we want you to do. And you you are allowed to die if you're playing up here, because <laughs> if you die... So this guy is not a... Wait, this guy is obviously allowed to die because he's playing B, so... This guy is not really allowed to die unless he kills someone for it, you know what I mean? Like, he's he should not peek unnecessarily. He's an important chess piece, very important. This guy, same deal, but he's just gonna have one job. This guy is a typical one. He's not allowed to die at all. You should never die back here. This guy cannot die. And the exact same with this guy. He cannot die. If you die because you ran out here and peeked this, then that's bad. That's really bad. It's not the same for the war apps guy. Because if he dies, nothing much happens. We can we can rotate for that. We can do something about it. And he has such a strong position, so not taking these risk is uh, a bit dumb. Like, we should take the risk. Super careful of that. If you rush out quick, if you come out like this, you got a few seconds. You you got a lead on this guy, so you can just sit here if you want, or you can peek into here, which is probably even better because it's gonna help out your B guy more. But you can do, it, and then you can take the aim battles with this guy. Don't expose yourself to window. So, but yeah, that's you know the uh, talk with other people about it that knows apps better than I do. But do not fo do not focus on killing the middle guy. That's not your job. Your job is to help out the B guy. So that's all five players. One guy defensive here. If he gets a really good spawn, he's a risky player. Then he's allowed to die, I guess. But he should still play it safe. He shouldn't take risks like apartments. He's, he's still a safe guy, but he's a bit more aggressive. More, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's more high risk, high risk, high reward to go here. You don't want to do like high risk, low reward. There's no reason doing that. So. There's a high risk, high reward play if you got a good spawn. Otherwise, he's playing pass. His job is to hold down this. Uh, we didn't have a bulk player, right? No, we didn't have a bulk player because we already have a guy back here. Um, oh yeah, and this guy, if he's playing aggressive, he can get flanked, so he needs to be aware of that as well. So, but it's the same for um, security side. They already got the strong positions over here. What? Why would they want to go over here? When they're here, they're like it's not good to be at, at this point. Between this area and all the way back here they're not getting any more advantage onto bravo if he gets here then he's super dangerous of course he can kill this guy super easily kill him. so then he's a major danger but that takes a long time for him to get down there so if we give up balk for him to run out here sure let him do that we don't care he can be up here if he feels like it as long as he doesn't get to our arch that's the next point that we don't want him to get to so so we can give up this mid balk it doesn't matter that much not for this kind of strategy so, passive guy back there, uh, guy onto Bravo from Workshop, uh, the guy with good spawn, that's super important, because uh, might even be worth taking a pistol, to be honest. Because if a guy jumps up here, you're dead, so you really... Uh, you can get around that one, though. Uh, instead of running inside, you can run outside and slide yeah. through the glass. Yeah, 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 you can do like this, but then you're slower, so... Yeah, you can decide either... I would take the pistol myself, but uh, you can decide. Either I'm slower and running through the glass, so I'm a bit slower, and I might get killed by this guy or some guy here, or 
no, yeah, I'm just one second slower, or maybe even one and a half. Yeah, or you true. take the pistol, and you're half a second faster, but you got a less firepower. But you're only gonna be you're prone here. First, for, yeah. You're gonna be here for the whole game anyway, so. I think the pistol is probably better. I, myself, I would be, if you're comfortable with the pistol, which some people say they were, so I would take the pistol. It's a strong gun, anyway. So. Uh, one I more thing with this position is pistol in, in uh, normal servers. <laughs> Yeah, it's good practice. It's really nice. Uh, one more thing with this position is really quick. Uh, later in the round or stuff, when people are starting to fall on your own team, especially the cafe guy, if your if our Barbie Street guy dies, which shouldn't happen at all, but if he dies, you just prone a bit forward and go like this. You still now you're invisible to this guy, this guy, this guy, and not to this guy. But that's where you're looking. So you want to shift where you're looking. Like so. These are the two angles. And the worst part is when your guy behind you dies, that sucks, but I've gotten lucky a lot of times by just, oh fuck me, and sit like this, because they don't expect it, so I got actually a lot of kills with it, coming out here and they don't expect that guy to sit down there, so you can definitely get kills with it, uh, but it's not great, so, <laughs> but yes, like if the guy dies behind you, then you'll, you'll have to look here, just turn around, and you're gonna be open to balcony now with your head, but if you're lucky, he won't see you either, so just sit like this. That's the free angles, but this is the angle you want to hold mainly, as long as everything goes smoothly. And if you're in uh, later in the game or in a 1v1, because this angle can be used any time that you think that you're safe from here, you're safe from Cubby, and you're safe from here, this position is super good. If you think the enemy is going to be there, 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 all this area, even late game in a 1v1, this is the best spot to cap. So you're sitting here, you know he was on Alpha, so he's going to come, You and someone called out he's in their street, then you can sit here. If he goes through cafe and gets on, you can you can stand up and he's not gonna look at you. Uh, I've done that so many times. They get on here and they're sitting like this, right? Because they're blocked. They know that you're on. They don't think that you're there because, well, yeah, they might think that you're there, but the, the last place they'll expect is over there. So they can see you through this now, but. Um, I, I never got a wall. They're gonna video. check T2 first. Anyway. They're gonna be super focused on T2. You just stand up and kill him. But that's more in 1v1s, 2v2s. Early in the game, if you get blocked, you do not want to stand up. You should rely on your backup to kill him. And if your backup dies, or if your backup's in a heavy firefight and doesn't kill him, that's when you stand up, because now you're 2v1. So that's when you have to take risks. But sit like this, I'm blocked on B. The guy in Cubby says, shoots a lot and then it's like oh fuck i'm down he's on big box and then you turn up and kill him big box and go prone again don't leave this spot because if you're lucky they don't have a call out for it <laughs> so we'll see but uh yeah all this stuff is gonna have to be uh, tinkered with a lot in scrims and stuff but you need you want to start with something right if we just went into a scrim yeah. right now or before we done this then we wouldn't have anything but now we got something to try and we can start with this as a basic and then we'll just make variations out of it and blah 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 and whatever you want to do. As I said, if we feel like if we feel like they do not pre-fire here at all or something, then I would definitely suggest running a guy for here and a guy for there. So then we'll remove uh, we'll remove the cubby guy. So we don't have a cubby guy. And the cubby guy runs for here instead, and I don't know, slide onto T2. One thing with T2 that I like. This is a side note as a little thing mid round early round doesn't matter if i sit at t2 as an insert guy say early round i managed to actually get there and i'm not blocked i don't like going out here which a lot of people do i prefer sitting and watching this angle because it's much more unexpected when they come out it's pretty good just it like this and uh, you know that when you're blocked you know it's only one spot and that's here that's the only spot you could do. because you're watching the big box entrance like you know he didn't come out of cafe so if you're blocked you know it's gonna be here and you can work with that Sitting here and watching this angle is really risky because everybody will watch it, right? I mean, every time you guys come around here, don't you just check this good thing? Some people even pre-fire it, so... Just a, just a small little tip that you don't have to watch this angle, you can actually watch this one. That's what I prefer to do. Okay. I talked for a long, long time. <laughs> yeah. So I hope you guys were fine with that, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah it was good. Yeah, you got like, cool, good that I didn't just talk for, you know, so many minutes and everybody was like, that seems like shit. Okay. Yeah. I, well, I think it was pretty good, actually. Yeah. Uh, okay, so with these two things, stick to these two. With these two things that we just went through, is there anyone who has thinking like, hey, what if we did this instead? Or hey, 
uh, I have a nice way that we can get out. Wait, I'll start just real quick then, just as, as an example. So we can have um, this is for the security default, how to deal with the apps guy, for example. So it's like, okay, we'll start off with the pre-fire. That's great. But maybe we don't want, who's going to watch apps afterwards? Because if he goes up here and pre-fires this, he can sit here the whole game. Sure, he can do that. Or, well, for a long time. But he can't really see that. Oh, shit. Fenris. Okay. Okay, three stars. Yeah, sure, you can show that, actually. I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll show that later, it's fine. Because some of these positions and stuff, or places that we watch, or pre-fires, could be substituted with some new stuff that someone comes up with, like a good nade, or a flashbang, or a smoke that blocks off. Or a molotov, like Cherry said, you know, molotov uh, workshop, stuff like that. Yeah, I like Molotovs because almost no one uses them in pugs. Yeah, I kind of like that as well, not because I think they're great, but because they're kind of fun to use. Yeah, well, my biggest thing is that you can hear anyone running through it, it makes it hard to look through, so you can take a different angle, and it's going to just discourage them from expecting a rush through it as well, so they're just going to play passive. That's a, that's a good actually topic, Ted. I think we already like went through a ton, so we can talk about that later. But when you can, next thing we should really take up that's gonna take some time as well is rotations, because now we talk about the initial setup, right? What everybody's gonna do in the beginning of the round. But that's a lot of teams do that. But what a lot of teams don't do is talk about what to do when certain situations happens. Like Fenix yeah. just said, if I kill the garage guy, or as you said, if our workshop guy dies, what do everyone else do? I, I mentioned it a little bit with apps, right? That like if the apps guy dies, it doesn't matter because this guy can rotate here, blah, blah, blah. We should talk about that as well. But that takes also quite a time, so... Yeah, maybe another day because we've already been yeah. here like an hour and a half at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we should do it another day. But no, that, that, that's, yeah. that's good. That's very, very similar to what Fenris... Uh, uh, what uh, Meowthius used to do for us, Fenris. Like, he watched that and... Uh, since he didn't expect anyone to push out of cafe, uh, garage, I mean, push into garage, it's not that common for security to do that. He, uh, if our workshop guy died, he just forfeited garage and just hoped that they didn't push garage, basically. And watch workshop instead. Because it's more likely they're gonna push workshop than it is that they're gonna push garage. So sometimes you just have to take calculated risks of where you think they're gonna push. Because you're in a disadvantage, so you can't cover every lane. There's five lanes on this map, and if one dies, then you have to give up one lane. Um, I got a knight for uh, for balcony. It's very very risky. Might might be for late round, not early round. Definitely not early round. Unless their bug player is really fucking slow. Mm. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, jumping over there can be scary yeah, you, when they pre-fire. Yeah, you should not jump over there. <laughs> Yeah, don't jump that. 
always slide across and run along the right hand wall for that arch. I'll show like I'll show like runs and stuff some other time, especially like I don't have to show a B run for someone who's gonna play apartments. So uh, yeah. yeah, I can show that later how yeah. certain things. Oh, yeah, I'm interested to see Max's grenade for balcony from apps. I see if I yeah. can hit it. Now let me see this shit. Oh. Can I? Uh, yeah, I can get into the window. I mm. I can actually get into the window as well. Do you want to show me? Do you want me to show a safer way? Yeah, because because I only know this one. This is really fucking risky. Yeah, I'll jump in and show you. So, you might want to spectate if you want to see how I line it up, and shit. I mean, all of these nades and shit, I can show you guys it, but it's gonna take me some time to also. I mean, I haven't done this nading in so many months, but. I'm pretty good at remembering stuff, so we'll see. So you just crouch back here, I remember at least. And then line up your B point with the window. I don't remember the height, but I think it's something like this. And then you just walk in front. Ah, oh, fuck, I think I bumped it. Yep. Ah, I got it. Nice. First try. And then you obviously want to learn to cook and shit, so you don't like expose so late, so try again with a bit of cook. Then we can even. It's still risky because you're showing. Oh, I got it again. So, um, that's yeah. a really nice nade. That's a pretty nice one. It's risky for this. Uh, yeah. But it might be worth the risk, you know. Uh, it it, might, it's you it's know, cool. It's cool. The other one is more risky, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah this one. Is, this one is definitely better still. And it's also very very easy to do because you just line up the B points. Oh. Uh, another one that I what I was gonna mention before, just a quick uh, <laughs> one way to make sure to dissuade them or kill a guy sitting up in the windows not only with you need to still do the pre-fire but after you've done the pre-fire if someone learns this you can actually have uh, the guy in balcony do other stuff the guy in balcony can start to rotate back here and then sit here instead and help out because it's a bit better than sitting in a dark window it's just easier to help to be uh, <clears throat> if you have say the workshop guy he runs up pre-fires and then after pre-fire he can run back here or maybe cafe guy like high heat or something, and then you can learn uh, apps Nate from here. But it takes some time to learn, and I'm not sure I know it anymore. We'll see. What? <laughs> it, it's a B name. Skybox. I really don't... Nah, I think it was the. Yeah. I think it was the uh, fucking. I think it was that that thing. Oh, oh, oh it's the ping. Fuck, I forgot about it. Yeah, it's difficult to do in 138 ping. I need to jump earlier then. It kind of lags, I feel, when I jump. Okay, I can't do it on this server. Ah, that's too bad. But uh, you can land it in here, and that means that if you're sitting here late, like waiting out your pre-fire, you can get a nade in here as well. And that gives you a lot more time on Bravo. Too. Ah, that was, yeah, that was the only thing I was gonna show. I can do something else. I gotta fucking see if I can get this done. That's what's better. Huh. I gotta practice that shit. You can do the same from in Serena's side. You can nade dark window. Which I don't think anyone has ever done. Pe not people haven't done this, really. It's I've done this before, but no one has ever naded from Serena's side. So that would be cool if someone learned. Nah. Miss. But yeah, you can nade from here as well if you go. So it's when you drop down the curb, you, you jump. But yeah, exactly. After I dropped the curve, but I don't know if it's. It, I'm pretty sure it's the ping, or it could be the tick rate. I think this is a 64 tick rate. But it's really weird. Like I used to be able to hit this all the time, it's landing a little bit too low. But it doesn't matter. I'll uh, I'll just quickly relearn it. It takes some time, but once you got it, you can hit it like nine out of ten times. But that's actually like it's not only pretty funny and a bit like crazy, but it's also actually very helpful. It's a, it's a bit late. It you can't piss get people off as well. Yeah, yeah. It definitely like people get pretty mad. And as you, as I said, you can do you can technically even do it from here, but it's a lot more difficult because you have to run it. So you can't technically throw from here into. Oh, let me see. Let me show you the gist of it. So you have to run it while you stand still, kind of. So yeah, you can get it into the window. Just a little bit further. 
That's possible as well. But I never done that myself because I realized it after I stopped playing, kind of. But this one I've done is scrims and shit. There's even like I think a video or a gif from a match where I do it and kill a guy. So it's pretty helpful. And then you also want to learn maybe B nades as well. So these guys on the defaults that play pass, you can think like, hmm, who has the most time? I would say probably High Heed would have some time to do something. I would say he doesn't technically need to get in position that fast. You can take a bit of a risk and hope that the enemy isn't just retarded and runs without stopping. You know, <laughs> if the enemy just runs like this, then yeah, High Heed is probably gonna be a bit late. But if he's 15 seconds later in position, most likely the enemy has run, so he can do an A like that, he can... Uh, he can do a balcony from here. Throw, the, throw a balcony from out here as well. I only know how they work, I can't do this one because I never... Meowfius played this position. But yeah, you can do a nade from here, in, into the balcony, hit through this gap, or bounces off this ledge and lands here. So that's instead of throwing it from the dark window, because the dark window guy, he wants to shoot on this. but. Uh, Jin has time to throw it up there. Or other stuff. The B guy should also learn a nade like this, because it won't it won't really slower slow him down that much. So whoever running through the R's to B, he should learn a nade like this. I don't know if that's good enough. Ah, not really. But a nade that lines there, so that it stops any rush from them. It, it I mean, it, then he's gonna get naded and he's gonna get shot from two angles. Well, then you gotta watch for the prefire coming through there. Yeah, that's why I'm running to the right, so it's easy to Like that, there we go. So, uh, yeah, that's why... Okay, I'll just show this run real quick, because a lot of people are gonna run through B a lot of times. So, there are a few different ones you can do, but generally the safest one that I've always done and worked is just run like this. That should save you from the first prefire. It is slower, but I don't think it's important to be fast as security, because you're already faster, and it doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, so you can also do a little bit more risky run like this, works a lot of times. I would probably start doing that if I notice they aren't pre-firing at all. I might start doing that as well. So you can run like this, this is like the fastest safe way. Then you make sure you don't open yourself up. Boom. This is far left you can go, if you go further left they'll see you, so... Yeah, you just run on the right side of the concrete block. Then there are a few different things. Uh, some people wall bang through this thing, down into here, so they sit on top. And they're gonna try to wall bang you. Like so. So it's a bit risky doing to the corner. What I would do then is do an early slide. Like as soon as you drop down here, you slide to the left. That usually saves you, like almost every time. Like there, because they're gonna hit you here and you're not there because you're sliding all the way across here. So that's pretty good. I mean there's no hundred percent safe way. Running to Bravo is a risky business, so but that's a lot safer than you just run like this, because this is the spot they're trying to hit, so... And running up here. So this is a risky one, you can't do that if they're pre-firing. If they're pre-firing, you probably want to slide at the second steps, go for here, and now you're pretty safe. Unless they're sitting far left, which nobody except me or Miafius does, sitting up here. And kill them there instead. I've never seen anyone else try to do that, so... That should be pretty safe. And, uh... Jump up here, Fenris. That's not good at all. Uh, definitely not. Uh, on the other side, uh, the first round, I would say, since we don't have a garage player, if he's gonna play passive, there's no reason even for him to go through here technically. He can just go around here. Preferably, though, he should learn a nade first. So, basically, you should jump the left glass most of the time. In pugs and shit, most people jump the right glass, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know anymore. But, uh, that's to be expected, so against a decent team, they will have someone pre-firing that, for sure. Like, they will have someone probably running up here and pre-firing the window. So, that's pretty dangerous. So, technically, it's even more safe to just run like this, because they're gonna pre-fire the window. But that's probably more safe. Uh, it's stupid, because people started jumping the glass for a long time ago because people pre-fired through here. But then people, because uh, when you sit inside the house, which was super common, a long, long time sitting inside the house. If you sit there, then you catch them running past, you see? <laughs> so, it used to be that everybody just sat inside there and they preferred this spot. But then people started to jump the glass, so now people have started to finally adapt and prefer the glass instead. So, technically, you want to go back to running here if you're going to do that. Otherwise, the safest way, if you don't care about being half a second slower, which is most of the times, you just go this glass instead. Doesn't matter much at all. Uh, thing to note, you gotta jump early. If you jump late, 
you can't jump again that fast because you know there's a jump timer I can only jump so fast even if I'm spamming so jump early and then jump again oh pretty close and then wherever you're going if you're going over there you want to slide here if you're going to B I would say jump peak see something yeah, yeah. This is also one spot is pretty nice to jump peak when you're getting out to Oh, you want to stick to the right, you don't want to stick to the left here. If you jump the if you run here, you want to instantly turn right, boom. So you're out of view. So you want to get to here. Then you can run, you're 100% safe from pre-fires and then you probably want to slide to get out of pre-fire from up there. Um, if you take the left glass, it's a bit more complicated. You pro you want to get a long a pa uh, you want to get us because as I said you don't want to run out here. If you're running out here, you're open. So you need to get along to the other side, and you either jump peak, which is my preferred way, or you slide. Slide is safer. Jump peak is better because you see them. So, and then I jump peak here as well. That's only me who does that. Most people slide, but I jump peak this because sliding is safer. But I don't get any info at all. If I jump peak, I see the whole Bravo point. They can't hide from me. So if I go here and jump peak, I see him wherever he goes. But I do it with a. You played the Counter Strike, so you know what a strafe is, right, Cherry? Yeah. Uh, and if you turn multiple strafes together, you get a bunny hop, right? Everybody heard of bunny hops. But strafing in this, you can strafe in this game, but you cannot bunny hop. And the reason is because you can't jump multiple times, but you can still strafe. Uh, that means that you're uh, you're uh, basically turning me there. And if you do it wrong, it's just gonna look like this. Like I'm turning me in there, but I just stopped. And if you do it right, it's gonna like you're gonna follow along. So that's what I do here. Like I still want to jump to the left, but I still want to. You know, so you can still scrape. But it's minor, minor different things. But if you don't scrape, you're gonna jump straight into the T1. So you gotta jump like this and land here. But if you strafe a little bit, you can get there. And there's multiple ways. Like these are tiny things. But if you learn to strafe, you can get some uh, advantages like that. You can't jump like that without strafing. Or there's an important one on station as well, where you want to learn how to strafe to be able to jump up on a rock. And small, small things. But that was just. Eh. Because if you if you just want to jump by, then do that. You can just jump and jump the second one as well if you feel like. I spent many hours on uh, surfing maps on CSS. I, I, <laughs> I expected so. So I, I would think that you could learn to scrape really well, actually, probably better than I can do. And uh, I don't know. It, it was six years ago since I played uh, competitive uh, CSS. But yeah, you, <laughs> but yes, I know anyone knows what strafing is. You can strafe in this game, and it is helpful in small, small situations. But. There are a few of them, but I just noticed now, this is actually one of those where I strafe a little bit, so whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's the running pass. It's really good for no to know for anyone. I would suggest on the first the first um, round, if play it safe. Play it safe and take the left glass. The left glass, the left glass is 100% safe. You will not get killed. So if you, if you take the left glass, you're safe. You're not going to die. Unless you die here, of course, but you should be able to slide past it. Yeah. Um, but if you get the best spawn and you want to go to garage, then you should not take the left glass because you have a good spawn, you have a flanker, and you want to be fast. So taking the left glass will not help you with that. So I would just run like this and take a risk. You know? You're already taking a risk running here. So, so that's the running things for spawns. Um, other glass things is you jump through glass and you're going to be faster. So this is also one where I used to strafe through. Minor thing, but yeah. Uh, that way, basically, you want to straight on. You wanna, yeah, you wanna hit it straight on. Uh, so when you enter workshop, it's super simple. You don't wanna run like this. I'm taking the wrong glass on purpose here. You don't wanna run because you see, I get a little bit of a hiccup. I'll show you again with the glass. I'll stop right before the glass now. Look, I'll stop. I'll lose some speed, and this is minor, but it all those minor things change. So if you jump through, you don't lose any speed. It's faster. We tried it with like being too simple. It's definitely faster. So you, you can technically do the same thing through apps as well, but. But you definitely want to jump the glass. Get to the glass and jump. That's why you see people jump through glass. So, and you can do it on the left one by strafing into glass. Well. But that's kind of difficult. Doesn't matter. But yeah, jump the glass when you're going to workshop. That's going to shave off a quarter of a second. Uh, don't jump anything at the starter round. Never, never run to the right or the left. There's no reason to ever. If you, if you, it doesn't matter with speed. Like, uh, say the guy playing garage on this side, maybe high heat or uh, doing that. Like, just wait in spawn instead. Let your guys run past and then run. There's no reason taking the right step. Run here. Don't jump this. Take the first arch. Uh, if you're going there, you're going for this gap. If you're going here, you're taking this. Don't jump the car. Don't jump the sandbags. Just run around them. And jump the glass. And then you run through. 
and then here you can slide and if you did all it perfectly and you got a perfect spawn you should be able to turn real quick to the right and not get pre-fired by the car because the car is over there and if you turn really quick here with a, and you did the run perfectly with a good spawn you're, you should be safe you should get killed so that's the run for that one and as I said on the other one it's, it's just in here and depending on how fast you want to be the fastest is to actually jump the glass Kept the glass fast, but I would suggest taking the extra quarter second to run around it is much safer. And then you take the right side if you go in garage, or the left side if you go in balcony. Pretty much it. It might seem like minor things than it is, but I just thought why not. The important runs are the V runs because they're not only to be faster, they're to be safer. So uh, this one to Cafe Fenris actually showed me, not showed, but he he reminded me of one thing. So I'll, I'll show you just how to run Cafe area as well. You want to run up on the right side, don't jump or anything. Jumping makes you slower in this game. Also, n try to press A and D as little as possible. As soon as you strafe, you're losing speed. So, if you hold W, now I'm only holding W and shift. I'm faster than if I start. So, if I turn with my mouse, instead of turning with strafes, I'm slower with strafes. So, try to strafe as little as possible while you're running through this. So, now I'm only holding W. I'm not ever touching A or D. And here you want to jump. Because he's faster than running around, and then you don't want to jump. I saw Fenris jumping that one, that's slower. You know, if you told me that, so you run around it, never jump. And from here, it's just straight on. So, now, don't, don't jump that one, but jump this one. And in here, try to not use A and D. If you use it a little bit, I use it after car here. I'll just press D real quick after landing because otherwise, I'll run into this shit. So, otherwise, just hold W all the way. If you turn on. Uh, uh, net graph or something, right? No, not net graph. It's something else. You can show your speed, the speed that you're running at, and you can see. You can kind of test yourself. So, holding W now, I'm at maximum speed. If I press D, I'm slowing down. And if I jump and strafe, I'm getting my maximum speed I can get in this game. So, if I jump and strafe, while I'm in the air there, that's the fast you can go in your search. That's a little bit of trivia for you. So, that doesn't matter, but it's the same as in Counter Strike. The, fast, the, the reason you bunny hop is to get faster. So. A strafe in the air is the fastest, a strafe on the ground is the slowest. I never see them do the backwards bunny hop in CSS though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty great. Okay, so that's the runs for you. It's good to know, cool. especially especially the B ones. And in spawn, uh, uh, it's not going to be like pugs where you just run. You, you can talk, you can ask, like, let me buy on your left side or blah 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 stuff. Like, I look at each other. Uh, to make I do sure. that in pugs anyway. That's great. Then you're a nice, then you're a nice teammate, and uh, you know, I mean, if you have an assault rifle and you're spawning here, and the flanker is spawning right there behind you, then either you let him run by instantly, or you can run like this. You just keep a little bit of a right, and you say that I'll run to the right, man. Just pass me, and now he should have passed. So now you can turn it and then run forward. Just or think if you of those piss things. people off. <laughs> oh yeah, but, but, you, stand in front of them. but you don't want to do that in scrims. So. <laughs> no, security side is always. You probably know this as well, guys, that security side is usually better. In certain sites where it clutters up a lot because people get stuck in here, right? Yeah. <laughs> people, boom, yeah. oh my god, you blocked me. So, look, I told you not to strafe, but if you're not the guy rushing, if you're the guy rushing, communicate with your team, you have a good spawn, you have a flanker, and then you look to your side and you see a guy here with an assault rifle, you just tell him, like, hey, dude, just make sure I'm fast first. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like, just make sure I'm first, and yeah, you just run, hold W the whole way. But if you're an assault guy, if you're this guy, then. Then you can stand here and then you can look a little bit to your side like this. You can strafe, look to your side, make sure that you slot in in between two people. That's what I do all the time in pugs. I never bump people off. So you just run like this. You can start practicing pugs already. Hold both and look to your side. Do that and have it as a habit to never. If you just look forward, just oh, all of a sudden it comes a guy like this. But if you just look a little bit to your left, now you see and then you can slot in right after him or before him if you're faster. So. Don't, because that actually a big difference. It, on the other side, it doesn't matter so much. But here, if someone gets stuck here, that can mess yeah. up the whole round. So try not to do that. And it's very easily the first guy. He should just keep on running because he's a flanker. But the second guy and shit, like look a bit to your side, be nice guys. You even communicate before and like, hey, let me pass. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, I think that was uh, pretty good. I think I'm gonna take a break there because. Uh... Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to take in much more. No, I think talked a lot. Cool. Now, now people. I mean, obviously not now. Oh, if people want to continue, sure.